police officers have read it what is your best I think we have the wrong person story. I've got two, from 25 years ago, when I was a cop, one on one side of the badge, and one from the other. The first, I got assigned a warrant service, to pick up a wanted felon. Mr. Robertson was 6 tall, 250 pounds, long red hair, bushy red beard, and lived at, let's say, 123 Elm Street. Pretty distinctive dude. So I roll up to 123 Elm Street, and sure enough, there mowing his lawn in the front yard is the man himself, 6, 250, red hair, red beard. I make contact with him, hey, Mr. Robertson, you got warrants and it's time to go to jail. Hook him up, take him to jail, and in central booking I get his property off him, and while filling out the inventory happen to notice this guy's Mr. Robinson, not Robertson. Sure enough, the wanted guy was my guy's landlord, and his twin brother from another mother doppelganger. When it said Robertson, Robinson didn't even twig to the fact I hadn't said his name, he just heard the similar sounding name as his own. We had to walk the whole thing back and reactivate the warrant, then kicked him loose with a handshake and an apology. The one from the other side, I had just gotten off duty at 2am and was driving home still in uniform. There wasn't any other traffic on the road, so I wasn't really surprised when a police car turned in behind me and started following me. I figured he was trolling four drunks and I was the only thing moving on the road. So he was just going to follow me a little to observe my driving, and head realized pretty quick I was sober and peel off. Instead another patrol car joined him, and another, and another, then all four lit me up, and spread out behind me, blocking the road in a full felony stop. Well, this just got interesting. They went through the whole procedure, and I carefully followed their instructions. When they finally got me out and saw my uniform, they just stopped for a few seconds while I was trying to figure out just what the hell was going on. Then three of the officers got in their cars, turned off their lights, and took off, while the original officer told me I could put my hands down and explained what was going on. My car was a spot on match for the suspect vehicle in an armed robbery and shooting that had just occurred right up the road. Ed driven right by the scene before the cops even got there a few minutes before the officer in the next district spotted me and thought I was the suspect. It was an interesting night. Two of my colleagues, murder squad detectives, attended custody to meet a defendant answering bail. When they arrived at the custody desk there were a couple of people hanging around, waiting for their solicitors. They told the custody sergeant they were there for, in surname, and he pointed one of the guys out. They went up and introduced themselves and said they, they would be questioning him at another station. So all three got in the car and headed off. Whilst driving, they told the defendant what would be happening, on arrival he would be arrested on suspicion of attempted murder, questioned and either bailed or remanded. The guy was, like you've got to be joking, attempt murder? I was shoplifting. He was relatively calm, half laughing and shaking his head. A short time later one of the officer got a call from the custody sergeant, their actual bail appointment had arrived. There were two defendants with the same name answering bail that day, they apologized to the non-murderous shoplifter, turned the car around, and headed back to bring the right person in for questioning. Keystone cops to the maximum. Old neighbor accused me of stealing from his house, and eating his food, and stealing his dead wife's jewelry. He said I matched the build, and clothing of the thief. Police came to our house and they knew my dad, and were skeptical to me being a criminal. I do pass the guy's house when I walk home, but I didn't even know someone lived there. Neighbor was adamant when they showed my face to him, and said his oldest grandson is going to stay with him, so he could be safe. Grandson arrives and police notice he looks like me, the build and clothing especially. Yeah, turns out his grandson would come to sneak into his house and steal stuff, to feed his drug habit. There had been a string of robberies, 7 in 2 weeks, in my neighborhood, so everyone was on high alert. I was home by myself, and one of my dogs started puking, so I rushed to let him outside, forgetting my dad had set the alarm. We had a silent alarm, so I had no clue it had been tripped, sending out a dispatch request to the local 520. 5 minutes later, there was a knock on the door. 
I'm young, home alone by myself, and had been told to never answer the door if I was alone. So I didn't. They kept knocking. Long story short, they broke the door down. They thought they had caught the burglars. Multiple cars, I vaguely remember there being a canine unit involved, and the police had their suspect, a 9 year old girl, crying her eyes out. I was not the group of thieves, who ended up being caught about a week later. In our family we had a great uncle who tattooed his name and social security number to his shoulder. Apparently he had the same name and birthday as another guy with a prison record, and had kept hearing about it. It came in handy at least twice, when he was pulled over, and the cops started arresting him. Each time he got out, because he had his social security as proof that he was innocent. Not a cop, but the wrong person in question. There is another man two years younger than me who shares my first and last name, exact same spelling. The only difference is the middle name. Police were investigating a county trustee who was giving people housing assistance checks they didn't qualify for. They would cash the assistance and give the trustee a percentage back. One of the civilians being investigated was the other guy. A plainclothes cop in an unmarked car shows up with a female holding a clipboard, identifies himself as a state trooper, and within 5 minutes is asking me for copies of my bank records. He's threatening to subpoena if I don't comply. This isn't the first time I've been mistaken for him. I used to get his mail all the time, and I even asked if they were looking for me or the other guy, pointing out our different middle names. I got really suspicious really fast. A high pressure situation, demanding access to my financial records, threats of subpoenas, and further legal action. So I started to doubt this was an actual police officer and was in fact just a scammer. The badge he showed me was just a plastic square like my driver's license, further muddying the issue. I told him I wanted to speak with the police and called dispatch. Two uniformed officers showed up 15 minutes later and confirmed the guy was an officer. The woman with him was some kind of auditor and records keeper. After a further 15 minutes of questions the woman pulled the guy away and pointed out something on her phone. Yep, they wanted the other guy. Not an officer but. I live in a neighborhood in 90 that is going through a major revitalization right now. So it's very much in a transitional phase. We rent a house from a good friend of ours. He bought the house from some garbage people who had lived there for a long time. These people did, sold, made drugs, there was violence, prostitution, everything. In general the house was disgusting, unlivable, really, just the worst. Well the scumbags who lived here still try to use our address even after 5 years. About a year and a half ago one of the dudes used our address to renew his driver's license at the BMV. He even had the audacity to leave a nod for us to call him when the license came in. Fast forward a few months, around Christmas time, we are all sitting around, watching TV when we get a knock on the door. My husband answers it, and it's a SWAT team with guns drawn. They see my husband, who does not look like a methed out crackhead, and inside are our two little boys, my parents, and me nursing our baby plus the Christmas tree and all the lovely trappings of our home. They immediately put their guns down, and my husband and I have a lovely chat with them. Yeah, they had our house surrounded, guns drawn, the whole shebang, looking for this dude who was wanted on some kind of violent felony. We were pissed at this dude who I refer to as Big Nasty. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.